Okay, this might be the last video. It's, um, we skipped section 13-7. We talked about sine, cosine, and tangent, and how you find them on the unit circle. Tangent, they're, they're not points on the unit circle, but they're points uh, right on the tangent line to the unit circle, x equals one. They're the y-coordinate of a point that's on the tangent line. If you remember the unit circle I showed you last time, there's a tangent line, x equals one. I just drew it myself. And then the, to find sine and cosine, cosine is the x-coordinate, sine is the y-coordinate of any degree measure, either in degrees or radian measure. Okay, so the x-coordinate would be the cosine of uh, 60 degrees. The sine of 60 degrees would be the y-coordinate. Tangent, again, is the y-coordinate of the line tangent to the unit circle, which is x equals 1 line tangent. So the y-coordinate, the x-coordinate is always 1 because it's the on the line of x equals 1. And in the, to find the tangent of 45 degrees, you'd have to literally use a calculator, put it in radian mode. Okay, so we talked about that. Now we're going to talk about, since we know how to find these three, sine, cosine, and tangent, the trigonometry functions, what we can do now is we can apply that knowledge to find the reciprocal trig functions. The reciprocal trig functions are cosecant, the abbreviation CSC, there's secant, the, co the abbreviation is SEC, and then there's cotangent, the abbreviation is COT. So c cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Here's what we have to memorize. The, the reciprocal of sine, sine is the y-coordinate, remember that? Sine of theta equals with the y-coordinate on the unit circle. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so we have to memorize that. So cosecant equals 1 over sine of theta, which is 1 over y. So instead of the, being the y-coordinate, it's the reciprocal of the y-coordinate. Cosecant is the reciprocal of the y-coordinate on the unit circle, 1 over y. So if you can find sine, you can find cosecant. And then the reciprocal of cosine is secant. Secant is 1 over cosine. And then remember, cosine is the x-coordinate. So the reciprocal of the um, cosine is secant. Secant equals 1 over cosine, which happens to be 1 over x. To find secant, you have to first find cosine and to take the reciprocal of that x-coordinate on the unit circle. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Tangent uh, is the sine over cosine. Tangent is equal to sine divided by cosine, which means that tangent is the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate of any point on the actual uh, unit circle, but it's the y-coordinate of the line tangent. But to find the actual tangent function, you can literally find the the sine of theta divided by the cosine of the, th the same angle, and then it be, it's the same as saying y over x. Since the tangent is y over x, the cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which is cotangent is 1 over tangent, which is 1 over sine over cosine, or just flip sine over cosine, it becomes cosine over sine. So since tangent is y over x, cotangent is going to be x over y, the reciprocal. So these are the reciprocal trig functions. And then we're going to get the answers by finding sine, cosine, and tangent, taking the reciprocal to find cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And then let's look at example one on page 763 of section 13-8. It says find the cosecant of 60 degrees. Well, the cosecant of 60 degrees is, well, first we have to re remember that cosecant is the reciprocal of what? Sine. So to find the cosecant of 60 degrees, we should first find the sine of 60 degrees and then do the reciprocal of that, 1 over the sine. So cosecant of 60 degrees equals 1 over the sine of 60 degrees. So let's find the sine of 60 degrees. Let's go back to our unit circle. 60 degrees, the sine is the y-coordinate, remember? So it's going to be square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, so the Cosecant at 60 degrees is 1 over the square root of 3 over 2, which is equal to, just do the reciprocal, basically. It's 1 divided by square root of 3 over 2, which is 1 times 2 over square root of 3, which is 2 over the square root of 3. Remember, we can't have square roots in the denominator. We're going to have to rationalize the denominator. This is the answer, but we're going to have to rationalize the denominator. Again, you can get the, uh, this is the exact answer, but you can get the, you can get the actual uh, approximate answer. I'll show you how on the calculator next. Well, this is um, rationalized as a denominator. Multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, or equal to 3. And the numerator is 2 square root of 3. 
It's 2 root 3 over 3 is the final answer. Again, to find the answer of cosecant, if you notice on the calculator, there is no cosecant or anything. What we have to do is literally do 1 over the sine of 60 degrees on the calculator. So you can have alpha y equals enter, or you can say 1 divided by sine of 60 degrees. Put 1 in the numerator. Put sine of 60, but we have to make sure that this is in degree mode. So let me go back to mode, make sure it's in the, oh, it, wasn't, it was in radian mode. Put it in degree mode. Let's go back now, second function, go ahead. And let's find that answer, see if we can do it now. Enter. 1.1547. That should be the same as saying 2 divided by the square root of 3. Let's see if we the same. Yep, same answer, right? So that works. So you can check your answers on the actual calculator. Again, there's no uh, cosecant function on the graphing calculator, but we have to know that cosecant and sine are inverse functions. So to find the cosecant, you do one over the sine of 60 degrees. Okay? All right. Now we can do the same thing with uh, B. B says, suppose the cosine of theta is 5 over 13. What would the secant of theta be? Well, we know secant and cosine are inverse relations, which means co secant is 1 over the cosine of theta. Well, if we know what the answer is, all we got to do is 1 over 5 over 13, right? Isn't the cosine of theta 5 over 13? It told us that up there. So what's 1 over 5 over 13? Just do the reciprocal of 5 over 13. The, then the answer would be 13 over 5. Do the reciprocal of 5 over 13, basically. Okay, now you can do quick check number 1, page 763. A and B. Okay, I'm going to continue to example two, and then we're going to do example two and three, and then we're going to stop right there. That's going to be the. That's going to be it. That might be the last video. Not sure yet. Example two, finding the exact values. Again, this time we can get the answers on the graph and calculator, but we want the exact answers, so we're going to use the unit circle. They want to find the cosecant 60 degrees again. The exact answer. We already got the answer last time, didn't we? But here's how we do it. So we have to use find the unit circle. Cosecant is the reciprocal of what? Sine, yes. So 1 over the sine of 60 degrees. So we have to find the sine of 60 degrees and to do the reciprocal of it. The sine of 60 degrees, if we use our unit circle, the sine of 60, again, is square root of 3 over 2, right? It's the y-coordinate of 60 degrees on the unit circle, square root of 3 over 2. We just did this right now. I'm going to do it again. I think example one was just finding on the graphing calculator or on the calculator. Now it's the exact answer. I did it once. I'll do it again. 1 over the square root of 3 over 2, which is equal to this 2 over the square root of 3. So cosecant of 60 degrees equals 2 over the square root of 3, 2. And here's A, B, C, D. None of these answers match. But if you rationalize the denominator, like I did earlier, you're going to get 2 root 3 over 3 is the answer which means C was the correct answer. That's the correct answer, which is approximately 1.15, as we found out in example one. So now you are ready to do quick check number two, page 764, A, B, and C. Again, CK, you're going to use cosine, 1 over cosine of 60 degrees. So find the cosine of 60 degrees on the unit circle, the x-coordinate, and then do the reciprocal of that answer. Cotangent, um, find the cotangent, uh, find the tangent of 45 degrees. It's 1 over tangent of 45 degrees. We already know what that is. Find the tangent of 45 degrees and then do the reciprocal of it. We found that earlier in one of the, in, in section 13-6. See, cosecant, the reciprocal is sine, 1 over sine of 30 degrees. Again, they want the exact answers, not decimal answers. Okay, so now we're going to move on to um, example three, using radians. Now make sure your calculator, we're going to use calculators only now. Make sure your calculator is back in radian modes. Every calculator has a different way to put it in radian modes. Right now it's in degrees. I'm going to press enter, put it back in radian modes. Second function, quit. Now it's in radian modes. So now it says use a calculator to in radian modes, round the answers to the nearest thousands. That's three decimal places. So let's go ahead and do that. The cotangent of pi over three... Since there is no cotangent button on the calculator, what we're going to have to do is know that the cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So 1 over the tangent 
of pi over 3 is going to give me that answer. So on your calculator, if you don't have alpha y equals enter, you can just say 1 divided by tangent of pi over 3. So alpha y equals enter, enter is another way of doing it. 1 over tangent of alpha y equals enter again. Or again, if you don't have alpha y equals enter, just say pi divided by 3 again in parentheses. Pi is second function here. That's what my pi is. Over 3. Right arrow. Put in parentheses. Close the parentheses. Press enter. See what you get. 0.577, it's approximately 0 0.5773, so we're going to round off to 0 0.5, 0 0.577 is the approximate answer. Let's see, make sure that's correct. Let me check. Yes, it's correct. So there's your answer. Let's find the CK of negative 1. Again, we're still in radian mode. you got to make sure you're in the right mode or you're not going to get the answer right. Well, CK is the reciprocal of what? Cosine. So we're going to have to find 1 over the cosine of negative 1 to find the CK of negative 1 because there's no CK button in the reciprocal, so it's simple to find. So alpha y equals enter again, or 1 divided by will work. 1 over cosine of negative 1, parentheses, enter. 1.85, 1 1.850815, dot, dot, dot. Let's round off to the nearest thousand. Thousands are three decimal places. One, two, three. Look at the number to the right. It's an eight, so it's going to round up to one. 1.851 1 1 should be the right answer. Yes, that's the right answer. Okay, now that we did that, it's simple. It's all calculator work. Go ahead and do quick check number three. Page 764, A, B, and C. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Your last homework is going to be homework number, um, I think the last one was homework number 10. On the last video, it was homework number 10. I didn't write down what homework it was. Let me find that real quick. This is homework number 10. So the other one, this homework is going to be homework number 11. Homework number 11 is going to be page, again, we didn't do the whole section, we just did the first three examples. So we're going to do page 766, number 1 through 28 all. These are short. These don't take long. Once you know the, once you copy down the notes and you know what the, what the reciprocal functions are, it's very simple to complete all of these not that hard okay this might be the last video i'm not sure yet we'll see okay guys have a great one